let's recap what we have um, known before and maybe some of you um, uh, haven't heard of this or not familiar with it. So um, we have blended learning criteria. These criteria are um, the one that we've always talked about. First, the course info, you need to upload um, at least one course information, which is the course outline. And you can also add course calendar. And then resources, you need to have at least seven activities. You need to have a minimum three activities. And for each activity, you need to have at least one response. And then for assessment, you need to have at least two assessment and minimum three submission for each. But um, sometimes people just want to um, fulfill this criteria without uh, implementing any um, impactful or meaningful learning experiences for the students. So uh, actually what, so the purpose for today is we could create like an online learning which could fulfill this criteria, but at the same time also give the students a meaningful experience and something impactful for their learning. Okay, so this one. So what this star means is if you want to get one star, you need to have a minimum requirement of one participation for each of your activity and then three submission for each assessment. And then if you want to have two stars, you need to have um, all the minimum requirement, like three activities and two assessments. And at least 30% of the enrolled students um, responded to the activities and assessment. So if you have, for example, 50 total registered students, you must at least have 15 students responded to the um, activities and assessment. And also, um, lastly, three stars, if you have 50% of the whole class responded. So in order to uh, have some kind of a quality control to this uh, kind of, um, grading, star grading system, you need to have, a, if you want, you can set enrollment key for your course so that um, you could control the, the students like, in, in your class. All right, and the next one, um, maybe you want to go in depth and know what are the requirements for the blended learning, how you can fulfill the criteria. So COM has provided a checklist for that. You could get this checklist. Um, from the, this page right here. So if you go to the um, apa tadi ya? Apa page ni tadi ya? Page yang for academic guide for academics just now. You can look at the bottom part. There is a checklist here, blended learning practitioner evaluation checklist, and you could refer to it in case you are wondering what should I fulfill. There are the list is here, and you could refer to it. And you could also get some of the tools that could help you to fulfill the activities and assessment. All right. So moving on to the second. This one is a more hands-on part. Okay. Uh, basically, um, we need to uh, go back to the most basic things of Elite. So if you go to your Elite page, we will do edit settings, importing resources, and adding media for uh, for today. Has everyone go to their elite page? Okay, for example, uh, take one of your um, course. This one is to edit your uh, settings because some people don't know that this could be done. Uh, if you see my elite page here, at the very um, left part, I have renamed all of my courses so that they um, are listed into semester and the session. Because before this, um, come just um, make this page exist for us, but they didn't really get the time to, you know, standardize all the wording. So what you can 
you can like standardize the wording so that it will be easier for you to find your courses later on. Okay, this could be done. First of all, you must turn editing on. And after that, um, go to the administration part and edit settings. So edit setting, you could, um, you know, rename the, the course into whatever you like. Like for example, my format is something like this. And then the short name. The short name will be um, placed onto the left side of the page. And then that's it. And then you could go to course format. Course format is where you can control your section. Everyone know what a, this, a section is? You know, when you have this um, new page of Elip for your course, they will be uh, divided into sections like topic 1 sampai topic 14. So you could control that. For example, you only want like topic 14 because we have 14 weeks. You could um, change the number of sections to 14 and up to you. You could arrange this by yourself. And you could also make it into like a show one section per page and so on if you like. But then I think there would be like a, a little bit of hassle for the students to see. Okay. That one is for edit settings. Okay, the next one is importing resources. As we all um, know, um, every semester and for every batch, we have like the same courses. So if the resources or the content for the courses is the same, for example, my history of architecture one is the same for all my three batches. What I did, what we can do is uh, we can import the first batch content of history of architecture of the courses to the uh, our current one. We do not have to like, you know, like upload lagi like the same thing over and over again. Okay, so to do that, what we can do is. We go to import. Okay, import. Ni kita nak import um, content dari courses sebelum ni to our current course right now. So sekarang I'm teaching cohort 3, history of architecture 1. I want to import the contents from the first batch of architecture. Bila kita dah pergi yang, okay semua dah kat sini eh. Bila administration, import. Kita cari the cost that we want to um, import, the content. So that's why the naming of the courses is important. Because if you name all the courses from different cohort the same name, then you will have trouble to differentiate which one is for this cohort and so on. So if there are too many results, you can look for the code. Type the code. At the bottom here. Uh, and you could find uh, the session and semester. Uh, so this is one of, uh, of the example of the naming that come give us. So using the edit setting just now, we could rename this into something that we are um, more familiar with. Okay, so I want to import the history, for example, from session 1819. And click the session that we want the cost and then continue okay so this part you need to um, uh, see what are the contents that you want to be included in your latest course so maybe you want to um, this one i think i don't have this so i don't want to include it group one i have a new group so i don't want it to be included include blocks Basically, what I want to be imported is uh, the notes, 
the website the video so i just take and also the question bank for me to do the quiz later on so this one after you choose what you want to import you click next okay these are uh, more details of what you want to be imported maybe the cost plan you don't want because it's this um is different this semester and announcement you don't want it so these are the notes that you want to be included into the um, current semester course If the assignment is different, you don't you don't have to include it inside. So if there are like topic with which have nothing on it, you just untick it. Okay, if you have done that, you click next. It will basically gives you some kind of a confirmation page where you can review back and if everything is good uh, click the perform import okay dah dah habis so after this, I have to tidy this up because there's like double thing. Alright, so semua tu dah diimport dah. This way you could save a lot of time and you don't have to um, do things twice. Alright. Okay, next. Um, I think a lot of people have known how to add media into the elite page so this one i just want to include it um so that everyone is familiar with it okay for example um, if you want to add a video into the page what you need to do is go to the any section you like and add an activity or resource uh, for example, I want to add a video, a YouTube video, and I click label. Usually, label is used to add this kind of media. If you can see this, it is to display an embedded sound file or video directly into a course, and it is also used to add a short description for that course. Okay, so... So I feel like this video is quite nice. So you, I um you go to Okay, you go to the Prof okay Prof. Huh? You go to the YouTube video and you scroll down and click the share button. <laughs> share button and you uh ni, click the embed this one yes okay you click on the embed code and click copy and then you go back to the elite page elite page okay jump Yeah. Nanti ada tekan tak nak? Eh. <laughs> Nanti terlupa. Okay, this one. Ah, nanti kita on mic lah. Ah. Okay. 
Okay. Listen to me. Uh, Tekan dulu dulu. Yes. Okay. Click this because this is the HTML punya code punya um, fill lah. Okay. And you paste Oops, the. Sekali. Ah, uh, and you paste the embed ni tadi. Ah, hmm. uh, and then you tutup balik lah. Ah, uh, bila you hmm. tekan balik, it will become like this. So, because I want the. Uh, I want the video to be like in the middle, so I lah, align the way center. All right. Eh, mana dia? Okay, so there it is your video. Okay, so I want to add image pula. Image. Image. I want it to put it in the middle. So I click this picture with the mountain here. And for example, I want to add this picture and upload this file. Prof da familiar dengan ni? Okay, after you upload the photo, uh, the image, you click description not necessary and you remain um maintain the tick on the auto size because when you want to make the image smaller for example i want it to be 650 uh, and then you click tap the number the measurement on the right side it will automatically change so that the Image is not distorted lah. Dia tak terpenyek or nampak pelik, nampak kebulus ke, nampak kembang sangat. So, because if you untick this, contoh ha, kalau Okay. Kalau saya untick ni, I want it to change to 650. When I click the tap button, it, it won't change. So, my image will look a bit weird. Like this. So, remain it to be thick and alignment middle up to you and then six. Okay, so if you are happy with it, then you just save and return to pause. So, you already have an image here. Actually, you could also add GIF image. GIF image is an image that could move, but it's an image. So maybe you want it to make more the page more attractive. You could do that and put it at the um, top part of the page if you like. All right. So okay. Now, um, I want to show some of the essential tools on Elip that you could, um, that I think sooner or later you will use because there is like a um, group work when your activities and you may want to do like a test or a mock exam or something. So you could try using this with the students. So first of all, group, group self-selection. Okay, for the first week here, I want the student to form a group. There are 34 students in my class for this uh, history of architecture class. So I want them to be um, like five people in one group. Instead of, usually I do choice, but then choice is not that helpful. Uh, say record prof. Uh, recording is in progress. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Okay, so, um, sebab kalau kita choice yang selalunya, saya guna choice. And then, um, choice ni, bila students are in a group, for example, five group, right? So, in the class, there are like um, six, six groups all together. So, if one student mewakili dia punya group to submit the assignment, then it is as if, Ada enam je submission for the course. 
So kita macam tak dapat lah bintang dua, tiga bintang tu. So what is best to do it is to have a group self-selection sebab students will, um, if you can see, students yang akan create the group and then they will give the group its own description. They can also set a password to um, if they have like discussed with their friends and they have um, formed their own group kan. Uh, in the real life, they could go to Elip to make it more formal, I think. And so that they could do a group submission. And also, what is good for this is because we could um, have a group list instead of we do a table and key in manually the student's name. We This group self-selection, it will save the group list into a CSV file where we can download. And we put into our course file because the course file they need to have a group list for that. Okay. Add. So, name of the assignment. You could display the description on the page if you like. Okay, you could in this group you can select a minimum member for the group. I put five here and maximum number. Uh, okay, six. Maybe dalam class tu kalau ada thirty four students divided by five. Jap tiga empat bagi dengan lima. Yeah, <laughs> ada enam group lah. Ada enam group. So, dalam enam group tu ada, uh, maybe like the maximum is five and minimum is four. You don't want a group to be like two, too few people, like three. So, you want it, you, uh, you have to set how you want the group to be like. Okay, so sometimes students, uh, when we ask them to do a group selection, they procrastinate. So, we could make the group selection um like there's a timing for that so we ask them to start now and open from for example 19 may and you give them only like one day to do it so you could change this and leave this tick students can create group and they can could set the name of the group and they also could do this I did this before. I asked the students to set password, but they got confused because of it. So I just never do this again. And yeah, everything looks okay. I want this to be antique. Okay, so save and display okay so ini adalah um, the group selection that i have did before so these are the students uh, the students um itulah, they form their own group and they name it whatever they like and they describe for example this assignment is to build a model of houses uh, of building so this is the name of the group and they describe it they are doing the friends work house by Ludwig van der Rohe. and these are the members in the group so you could download this And keep it for your reference. All right. So, okay, that is for group self selection. And uh, the next one is for quiz. 
I believe um almost all of you have done the quiz before. So let's see. Okay, to add quiz. Like we normally do, add an activity. And then choose quiz from the list. This time. Here it is, quiz. Add and then name the quiz. Okay, so you for the quiz, you could set the timing when you want to open the quiz. Uh, click enable first and then uh, 20th May, blah, blah, close the quiz. You want the students to um, answer the quiz at a specific time and you want them to be done uh, by, say, 21st May, you just click the date. And make sure you um, set a time limit. If it's uh, like, a, like a serious kind of quiz where you counted the mark as a carry mark, you could impose this time limit. But if you, if this is for practice, you could just like untick it. Okay, let's say it's 10 minutes. So when time expires, you could choose it to be um, You choose ah, which one is the option that you like <laughs> based on your preference. Okay, and great. Great to pass. Is it 50 or 5 over 10? And then attempts allowed. Uh, um, like I said just now, if this like is like a formal um, assessment, like a midterm test, you could make this only one. And if this is like a practice quiz, practice questions, you could um, set the items to like uh, how many times you like. This one, I think maybe prior use this for the final examination where they shuffle the questions so that the students won't get the same question uh, if they are answered answering the online examination on uh, exam, final examination online so when the students start the quiz to answer the quiz they won't get the same question so they won't be like asking around about the answer you could also set the quiz to be uh, to get like uh, immediate feedback different feedback and so on So like uh, default appearance. Yeah, uh young okay, so you boleh uh set the overall feedback as well after they're finishing the quiz. Maybe you want to give them some kind of uh encouragement. So grid boundary you could put like if they score like 80, 80 and above, you could put a feedback like well done or something like that. This one you could explore by yourself <laughs> and then you save and display. Save and return. Oh, okay. It's out of range. Tak nak lah letak over feedback. Okay. Alright. So in this quiz, there are no questions yet. So you, um, your work is still not done. So it, you should edit the quiz and 
this is the editing uh, page for the quiz you add um you could also add from question bank or add a new question hmm, i don't have any question bank but anyway you should add a new question you could add a new question it could be multiple choice true or false matching there's so many options here so choose which one you like to have okay so short answer question you could name the question maybe um, i'm naming this prehistoric architecture one because this question is about this topic so <laughs> yeah, lah, boleh lah. Okay, and then you could add the marks there. One. Okay, so for um general feedback, sometimes when uh, you can set the quiz after a student answer one question, there is a feedback after that. And the cut feedback too, you could put um maybe you want to put the correct answer and you uh, should uh, you want to explain um the answer <laughs> you okay sana nak cakap <laughs> Nadia sana ya <laughs> okay so general feedback lah okay you uh, in the general feedback after the question answer that question. Maybe dia jawab salah and then you you can put the correct answer here. And you can explain why, uh, elaborate lah on the answer. Wait. Okay. You could put some of the um, answers here. Okay, multiple tries. You could also um, set this one, penalty for each incorrect try. So, okay, save changes and continue editing. Okay, there's something missing in my thing. What else? Six changes. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, so so uh, first question is done. So you could add more questions as you go. And then when you um you wonder how the students may see it, you could actually um go to the top part of the page, and switch role to. Yep, ada orang cakap ke? Tak ada. Okay, switch role to um, student. Okay, belum lagi lah kot.
Tadi ya. So this is how it looks like. Eh? Yon. Yes. Kita ha. pun uh, masa buka kuis ya 20 Mei. Ni ha. Ah. Sebab ya student saya dapat view. Hmm okey. So this program okay. Okay, so sorry ya. So kalau you nak tahu macam mana student will uh, view your um, page just now, you could switch the role to student, and then this is how the student look at the page, and they will see the revision quiz, and Uh, this is how um, it will look lah. Okay. And um, actually they could try to answer the question again. If they feel like it's the wrong answer. And finish attempt. Once the they are satisfied with the answer, they just click submit all and finish. And they will no longer be able to change the answers that they um, did. Okay. Uh, don't forget to return to your normal role. Tanya. Ah, ah, ya, Prof. Ah, ah, kan kalau quiz ni, kalau macam question yang kita letak ni, lepas tu maksudnya kita, bila kita key in, maksudnya student immediately dah boleh tengok. Tapi yang semalam yang kata ada ah, boleh hide ah, kan supaya yes. nanti yes. nak okay, buka Prof. tu ada. Sini, eh? Because at the moment yang you clear ni, maksudnya turut student tu dah boleh lihat. Tapi Prof, uh, kan? kalau Prof set masa dia, Prof boleh set masa dia. Dia ada dua cara lah. Uh, prof boleh set masa buka dekat specific time yang prof nak tapi uh, and then prof boleh juga buat macam ni lah edit ni pergi kat uh, tempat quiz tu edit uh, kat bawah ni. student view kita tak boleh buat kat sini kan apa prof sekarang ni you do the, dalam student view dia boleh edit juga eh? tak saya dah kembali ke lecturer view oh okay 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 hmm. edit and then uh, prof boleh hide macam ni lah Selalunya saya buat macam assignment brief, saya nak macam surprise-surprise, saya letak dulu tapi saya hide. Lepas dah uh, boleh start assignment tu baru saya uh, tekan balik and then show. Okay. Uh. Okay, sometimes ada uh, benda yang kita nak macam, okay, kita nak buat, for example, my assignment ada four submission of sketches. So, dia punya, um, the activity is the same lah which is assignment one, sketches of submission one, where the students have to submit the sketches in soft copy. And because there are four submissions, uh, I tak perlu buat from scratch. Letak ni, letak assignment tu, letak bila dia punya due date and so on. I could just go to the first one because it's the same, right? I edit and I just duplicate. Bila dah duplicate, dah ada ni. So, kita tak perlulah banyak buat banyak buat kerja banyak kali. Okay, hide, duplicate, assign lah. Siapa lah? Oh, dah nak habis lah masa. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sekejap, okay. Quiz, turn it in. Ah, okay. Lastly, turn it in assignment. Turn it in. Sorry, sekejap. Okay, Prof. 
<laughs> Tadi kan you duplicate the submission. Uh -huh. So how do you actually rename it because it become uh, submission one. So uh -huh. when you rename it, you just have to go to the edit. Tekan ni je uh -huh. tak tekan pencil ni je. Edit title. Alright. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, sorry, ya, oh, lambat. Eh, tak apa, tak apa. Inilah gunanya bengkel ini. <laughs> okay, X X. Uh, contohlah, um, Prof, jangan lupa tekan uh, enter. Hmm. Ya, enter je. Uh, like that. And then, uh, kalau Prof tak nak letak dekat tu, eh, kalau semua, <laughs> Prof lah. <laughs> Ngajar one to one. Okay, kalau tak nak letak kat sini, boleh alih pergi tempat lain. Eh, mana? Uh, boleh alih, alih pergi section ni ke? Macam tu lah. Okay, eh. Nak alih pergi bawah ni ke? Dia boleh alih-alih lah. Semua ni. Okay, apa lagi? Okay, lastly, turn it in assignment. Uh, semua dah familiar lah dengan turn it in ni. Just saya nak tunjuk... Uh, I admit I pun baru tahu benda ni menyedihkan sangat. Okay, tu mana tu in the assignment saya? Sekejap ya, saya cari sekejap. Hmm. Okay, so this is uh, the deleted assignment. Hmm. The... Eh, salah lah. Ah, okay. So, ni ada assignment saya bagi student which is the uh, a case study of uh, heritage building in Kuching. For the case study, they, need, uh, they have to do a report. So, this is, um, okay, add an activity. How to set up this? Add an activity and you click, uh, turn it in assignments. Ada number two sekarang. So, you add. And create a name. Summary. Uh, actually, you could also. Uh, you, you could set the whether it is a file upload. Or it could be any submission type ke. Kalau uh, it could be macam video ke, image ke. You click this. They could submit a word file, PDF or anything under the sun. And kalau you tak tu, you want it to be a file upload. Usually this is um, ah, untuk upload. Benda-benda yang perlu di file upload lah. So image tu. And then text submission. Kalau dia, uh, you not uh, only text submission. You don't want like, uh, usually this one if you want to, um, it to be filtered through for originality you make it the text submission so when sometimes kan student ni dia ada bijak jugalah they don't want the turn it in to be to know that they copy paste they op, they have self okay the word file they have converted into pdf but the pdf they go into photoshop they make it into like they change the um the nature of the file i think to make it a uh, flat. So, bila the turn it in machine or something, when they scan through it, there's no copy pasting because they are all flat. So, if you don't want them to do that, you click text submission. Lah. Okay, uh, the submission could be in two part, but if you only want one part to be submitted, then just uh, put one there. Maximum file size. Uh, to be safe, uh, I always put the maximum one. And then, okay, for this one, uh, sometimes if you are, like, if you want PDF, you just put, um, you just say at the description here, you only want PDF to be submitted. So, if, um, eh, sorry, if you want, like, uh, Saya nak cakap. <laughs> okay, for, if it's a text submission, if you want like PDF and words only, so you click the, you maintain this one as no lah. 
Okay, so uh, display, display originality. When students submit, they uh, it's up to you whether you want them to see uh, the, the originality or not. So if you want it to be shown, the percentage of the originality of the um, report, you could uh, put it yes. And this one, great. Great, yeah, I never um, do anything with it because I, ne I don't usually uh, mark the submission right away. I usually uh, download all the submission and then print them out. Okay, ni pun sama juga lah macam the deadline, start date, due date and so on. And then this one, do you allow submission after the due date or not? Okay, Prof. Ah, uh, Prof. Uh, I have one question uh, before I go. Uh, question before I go. Bila kita guna kata ni, 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 so maksudnya bila students submit dia punya uh, text submission, kata lah words, so which mean uh, the system will immediately detect whether they, are, uh, they will actually uh, public ataupun uh, uh, copy. So dekat mana dia akan dia akan review masa immediately bila kita download student punya works dia akan tunjuk hmm. macam mana have you tried it? Okay. Saya tunjuk prof eh, saya punya ni. Ha. Okay. Ni saya. Ni student sam buat submission ni. Eh? Ah uh, ni um saya punya course sebelum ni for cohort 2. Oh. Okay, so ni dia contoh dia lah. Dia akan tunjuk eh, dia punya dekat assignment dia. Hmm. Macam ni. That one I mean is uh, the student oh, punya assignment. Ada tunjuk ah. dia ada copy. Ada, ada ni prof. Okay. Contoh ni. Oh. Uh, 5%. Selalunya kalau the student punya ni, similarity dia macam lebih 20%. Eh, hari tu 40% ke saya suruh dia orang tu balik. Review tu. Um, itulah. Ada hantar ada persen juga? Bawah, ada 100% eh. Tak yang terjadi ni. Tak mungkin Chef Fung. Sekejap, <laughs> okay. Kita boleh tengok Prof. Dia ada huraian dia. Nanti you sharekan video, saya kena pergi speed meeting pula. Okay, Prof. Eh, sebab, sebab ada speed KPI briefing. Eh? Okay. Okay, nanti nanti you sharekan this uh, video yang you buat uh, khusus ni dengan saya lagi. And then I can achieve you through story. Thank you very much everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the effort. Thank you, uh, uh, <laughs> Puan Nadia for the effort. Thank you, okay, thank, thank you. you bro. Okay. Oh, sorry, I have to go. Yeah. It's okay. Apa, uh, Prof J? Puan Nadia. Ah. Ah. Ha. Dia, dia selalu dia kalau in, turn in editing tu dia tak boleh lebih pada 15% kan? Dia 15% ke Prof? Dia punya plagiarism kalau 15 lah. Ha, 15. Ha. Saya tak Mas berapa syur. Plus 10 lah Prof. Plus 10 lah Prof. 15 mesti uh, anak lah. Bukan 10 lah. Uh, no, in, kalau as a student, kita kalau 15, I should, dia sepatut oh, okay. dia, kalau paper macam tu, dia 5% je. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay, thank you. Okay, see you guys. See you, Prof. Okay, uh, okay. under the turn it in punya assignment, you boleh click the assignment and it will bring you to this page. For example, this group, there is this, um, a lot of things over here. What I usually look at is this one, match overview, and we could see which one is um, contributing to the percentage of similarity. For example, macam ni, uh, tak pula, ini just perhiasan je untuk report ni, so it doesn't, it's not considered as plagiarism. So this one, this group is quite okay because they use their own words, they don't really um, copy paste a lot of things. And you could see um, this one, which part that they copy, I mean like refer to. This one.
So maybe this one day it's not really like uh, a lot of things that they macam ambil bulat-bulat. They just use some words. So it's forgiven. And okay. When you have like a submission like this, right? What I did before I like, I download one by one. <laughs> But now I know that actually you could download all submission. Eh, kenapa? Wait. Sorry, uh, usually there is like assignment. Nadia? Nadia? Yes. Ada macam assignment um, download all submission dekat belah kiri tu. Macam assignment setting kah? Ke atas? Selalunya di atas. Uh. Atas ni oh. Hmm. Sebab uh, yang saya tengok tu dia assignment submission bukan macam turn it in lah. So for example, I don't know if turn it in dapat Buka ke tak? Dia macam selalunya ada drop down menu mm -mm. Untuk download all assignments Macam ni kan? Okay so eh, Submission um, Under this one lah Okay if you could see the left part here Administration Under the assignment administration If, kalau ni ramai kan, contoh kalau ada uh, lecturer, not our faculty lah, ada lecturer ada 100 of submission. You don't have to view all submission and download satu-satu. You could just um, click this, download all submission and it will be downloaded all together. Alright, so dah 12 part minit, I will leave it to, okay, some, I will give you the slide here. And you could just click this and to see um, this is Kiman punya work. Some uh, lecturers, they treat this elite page as like a space for data collection lah untuk student submission and just to put the notes. Uh, and this is um, student pun fikir macam ni sebab I did ask before what do you think of elite to one of my student and he he said that For me, it's just a data database collection. So if we want it to make it more impactful and meaningful for the students and more interesting and fun for them to do, you could um, add images and then in like for the notes that you put there, you can describe it. Uh, like for this unit here, you could put like... um. Description of what uh, they could learn under it. And another example of a nice example, what Kiman did. He changed the Elip punya page to become something like a gamification. Where the task, the assignment, it is, it is treated as some kind of a, uh, you see, like mission challenges and mission tools kit. The tools kit are the notes and the references online and the mission challenges are the assignment so when students see this um it will create some kind of a something like a game for them instead of you know like learning so if you want it to make it more meaningful and impactful you could um be extra creative by doing something like this and okay so that's it for uh, jab, jab. There's not much here, just tips and tricks. Uh, like I said just now, prepare first, then hide. Sometimes uh, you want the elite page to be ready and prepared, so you just uploaded everything. Uh, for example, assignment brief pun you ada, but you don't want to reveal it first, you can hide, just like I have mentioned just now. And you can unhide it uh, or show when you are ready. And then you can change your role into student. Need to, uh, uh, to wrap up now. Huh? If you want to see the page from the student's perspective, you could change your role to student 
and you could edit the section instead of having like weekly topic when you're learning you need you could gather um you could get the put the elite page into something like for example my page here i gather it into um projects project one and under project one is the brief the requirement so that the students could easily refer to resources and submission it's always the info info section the resources and the submission info resources and submission so it doesn't have to be the weekly learning topics and to make your life easier on elite download submission as a group you could import quiz question you could also import uh, the resources and that's it from me for today if you have any question you we i think nadia can we have two minutes for q a boleh boleh okay kalau ada soalan boleh tanya ha kami ada soalan ya ai bukan kita kan ada patch uh, khusus kan bolehkah kita tambah uh, apa another patch untuk kita punya khusus boleh sih oh ha? patch call khusus macam tu eh uh, bea 1056 kan aha yang kita request uh, come untuk create another patch untuk kita punya khusus. Oh boleh, boleh. Boleh tak? Oh. Extra patch so ada dua patch for one course. Ah uh, yes. Boleh sebab sometimes they memang tidak buat macam ya, yeah, macam kalau ada banyak-banyak lecturer. Kan tidak ya. Tapi kita oh, boleh gabung jadi sekali ah macam ya. Boleh tak? Okey. Any other question from someone else? <laughs> Prof J, ada soalan Prof J? Izik ke? Nanti, nanti cuba cek balik dengan Puan. Okey, boleh. Prof, kalau Prof... Thank you. Uh, um, ni ada. Eh, ni ada. Macam yang kami pada tadi, dekat my elite page tu, the very front part, uh, dekat sini ada semua. Uh -huh. uh. Okey. Looking for ideas, ah. Uh. Uh. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, Ada lagi tak Nadia? Tapi lagi macam siapa ni? boleh stop sharing. Okay Nadia, you ready Nadia? Okay, kita close uh, the patch. Okay. okay. Thank you semua. I will continue uh, um, for my session. Okay, blending your course right, meaningful and impactful online learning using external tools. Okay, kalau macam Yon tadi, dia explain macam mana nak pakai uh, ELIP. Okay, uh, untuk part saya pula, external tool selain daripada ELIP tersebut. Okay, so this is the key topic for today. External tools, hands-on activity and also sharing session. Okay, ELIP patch for BEQ 1054 and BEQ 1063. Okay, ini just quote lah. Okay, KT leader. Blended learning is not a just a trend and we are starting to see technology integrated in really intentional ways. Okay, lagi-lagi uh, masa PKP ni, blended learning bukan sekadar trend, ia dah jadi uh, keperluan dan uh, kemestian untuk uh, kita punya teaching and learning. Okay, uh, this is a blended learning recipe. The ingredients are, okay, physical room, and then we must have online learning environment and also dedicated instructor and one technology device, uh, laptop, um, handphone, okay. Okay, so how to make yours more successful? Okay, we can choose a suitable model okay, to implement technology tools for our activities. Okay, like... Um, Saya suka pakai ni, okay, model SAMR. Okay, tapi terpulanglah sesuai dengan uh, kos masing-masing. Okay, so uh, dekat sini saya highlight 10 rules okay, on how to make uh, your blended learning more successful. Okay, rules number one, align your learning objective and define your learning outcome. 
So this is uh, very important uh, supaya kita tak buat uh, tak membuat aktiviti menggunakan teknologi tu sesuka hati. So mesti uh, aktiviti tersebut uh, reach our learning outcomes. Okay. So number two, choose appropriate blended learning model. Okay, macam tadi kita pilihlah SMR dan banyak lagi model yang sesuai dengan kita punya khusus. Okay, rules number three, we explore different teaching method to complement the models in rules number two. Okay, rules number four, we use the right technology tools. Uh, yang ni educator need to explore, kena lagi explore the latest technology ataupun Uh, current technology yang sesuai dengan kursus yang boleh mencapai kita punya learning outcome kursus tersebut. Okay, rules number five. Okay, we must, we as an educator must master the traditional and also online content. Okay, dengarkah? Dengar, dengar. Okay, okay. okay. So, um... Rasa macam... Cakap seorang-seorang nak. Cakap seorang diri. Okay, let's go on, saya teman. <laughs> so, okay. So, for rules number six. Okay, we need to uh, set expectations and share an overview of activities as well as outside resources. So, rules ni uh, sangat penting. Okay. Because we need to apa make students understand what is the purpose of that activity. Okay, bukan kita masuk kelas terus bagi aktiviti dan student pun blur lah aktiviti tersebut. And then for example, if we use external tools, okay, selain daripada ELIP, we need to explain to the students uh, how these tools can help them in their learning. Contoh Kahoot, kita kena explain dengan student lah selepas uh, Kahoot ni dibuat, apa benefitnya kepada students. Macam mana boleh membantu dalam pembelajaran. Okay, so rules number seven. We give students control over time, path, place and pace. Okay, rules number eight. Encourage collaboration in the classroom and online. Okay, yang ni based on my experience. Kalau sebelum ni boleh masuk kelas lah. Okay, saya buat brainstorming dalam kelas. Okay, tapi selepas tu assessment menggunakan online tools. Okay, for example, Kahoot, Socrative. Okay, so we combine uh, classroom dan juga online. Okay, rules number nine um, challenge students to learn and grow with authentic, relevant tasks. Okay, yang ni um, taklah selalu. Uh, saya selalu bagi uh, selepas buat aktiviti tersebut, saya akan bagi reward dengan student. Okay, yang ni pun uh, SR Diana pernah buat lah. Okay, kita bagi reward dengan student so that uh, students feel apa appreciated lah uh, dihargai dan di acknowledge orang punya uh, kesungguhan tersebut okay so rules number 10 uh, we as an educator in this technology based learning must be patient and persistent and be a reflective practitioners so sekiranya ada kekurangan di Uh, aktiviti sebelum ni, so kita boleh improve lah for the next activity. Okay, rules number six. Okay, yang ni kita kena explain dengan student. Dengar? Dengar. Siapa tadi? Ah, Yon, Encik Wafi ke? Ah, ya, ya. Dengar, dengar, dengar. dengar. Okay, uh, Encik Wafi kena explain dengan student uh, aktiviti tersebut. Okay, macam mana nak pakai tools and outcome from the activity. So, kena explain. Jangan masuk kelas, terus buat aktiviti dan student pun just record, follow tapi tak tahu apa hasil aktiviti tersebut. Okay, faham? Okay, okay, okay. Faham, faham. Okay, rules hmm. number seven. We give students control over time, path, place and pace. Uh, yang ni more to flexibility. Okay, and then rules number eight. Path tu apa eh? Path tu maksud apa? It's good. Saya jago ya. Okay, rules number eight. We encourage collaboration in the classroom and online. Okay, rules number nine. Uh, we need to challenge students uh, dalam aktiviti tersebut. Macam kita boleh bagi reward siapa yang menang, the best poster or the best uh, result. Apa so contoh can, reward Nadia? Makan we can give reward. Uh, kalau macam SR Diana, 
Ni just ada anak apa yang kita tak berit? Ayuh, reward macam keropok pun jadilah. Oi. Ronok je kan. <laughs> kalau macam uh, uh, experience saya, uh, kalau tak ada makanan ataupun uh, apa barang kan, we just uh, apa take the picture and post in ellipse. So congratulations. So that orang ni lah happy tengok gambar besar dekat ellipse patch kan. Hmm. Hmm, macam tu lah. Okay, rules number 10. So, uh, kita kena patient and persistence and be a reflective practitioner. So, uh, after we done one activity, kena reflect balik, reflect balik uh, apa kekurangan, kelebihan dan whether the student can achieve the CLO or not. Okay? Okay. So, we need improvement for next activity. Okay, so uh, we go to useful tools for blended learning activities. Okay, kita ada banyak tools. Uh, even uh, KAM pun ada banyak mewar-warkan tools yang menarik, yang lebih advanced. Tapi yang ni, saya punya ni uh, simple lah. Okay, if you want to do the quiz in the class, okay, we can use Kahoot for creative and quizzes. Okay, if you want to do survey, we can use easy polls. Contoh, uh, selepas presentation, you want to ask the students uh, the best presenter. So we can use this easy poll to vote for the best presenter or the best group. And this one is Mentimeter. Okay, mind mapping. Boleh juga kita suruh student brainstorm. We give them article, for example, and ask them to brainstorm and transform the, the info to the mind mapping, then we can use the bubble.us uh, Okay, and then for video activities, this one is my favorite. Okay, flip grid. Okay, discussion. Okay, we can use Lino and also Padlet. Okay, Padlet ni memang rasanya semua lecturer dah pernah pakai. Okay, so uh, we as an educator, we need to explore lah. Okay, explore setiap tools yang sesuai dengan kita punya kursus. Okay, so online tools number one, Kahoot. Kahoot ni semua lecturer dah pernah pakai rasanya. Tapi uh, kita buat juga hands-on activity for today. So if you want to create the quiz in the Kahoot, we can go to Kahoot website and log in. Okay, we can create the quiz here. Okay, and soalan. Okay, macam saya ni saya dah buat uh, untuk asas-asas contract, cost data, okay, cost estimation. Okay, so in order to uh, use Kahoot, the students need to install Kahoot apps in their mobile phone. Okay, so uh, saya nak buat hands-on activity for Kahoot dan nak menjemputlah Prof. J, AR Awang dan yang lain-lain untuk buka Kahoot apps tersebut dan enter this pin. Okay, Prof. Join Prof. Saya nak bertanding dengan Prof. ni. Rasanya sebab Prof J guna phone. Ah uh, tu lah. Oh, ada dua. Untuk guna webex ni. <laughs> dua ringgit. <laughs> Dapat challenge. Okay, Wafi dan SR Gui pun kalau boleh join lah. <laughs> oh, you dah masuk dah? Eh, kejap, kejap, kejap. Handsome ah? <laughs> Saya kena ajak sabahan Dia ajak boyak ah, apa? Kelas sebelum ni uh, boyak yang menang. Oh. Mana kalau kalah ni? <laughs> ni boyak si bunyi. Bulai, bulai ya, psycho ya. Hahaha. <laughs> 
Kalau dalam kelas, uh, kita tengok nama-nama payung teduh, sabahan, handsome ni, kita boleh buang lah. Kita boleh suruh orang tukar nama sebenar. Baik. Puan kau, yang lain tak join kan? Berapa lagi ah? Ada macam 19 partisipan. Tadi join kat dia. Kopi on the way. Ada kopi on the way. Kopi on the way. Ai bagai mu. Iko. Doktor Wu, join Doktor Wu. Jadi ah Doktor Wu, nya bukan Malaysia ni kita cakap English ya? Oh. Ah. Kak Dip, Kak Dip, Doktor Adibah. Ah, itulah ada Kak Dip. Kak Dip, Doktor Adibah from FSS, thank you for joining us. Rosana, Rosana. Ya, yeah, rap ya, yeah. Rizana lah ya. Yeah. Oh, rap. <laughs> oh, Rizana, okay. Dah kah? Dah kah? Music ah, oh, ada lagi. Good. Cik Awang dah. Saya dengan masih satu tim. Hey. Malas. <laughs> individu, individu. Okay, so get ready. Lupa, lupa. <laughs> ada lah soalan tu. Eh, sorry ya, soalan berkenaan dengan construction. So, Alah, slow internet. Apa so, soalan? Ad, QS uh, bot. Yes. Apa tak? Macam <laughs> mana nak buat kahut tak Nadia? <laughs> Bukan, salah. <laughs> Nadia video kita masih still recording ke? I don't, I'm not sure. Cuba tengok. Asalnya masih. Okay, so all the students uh, got the correct answer. Okay, uh, and then next. Wow. Okay. Ni uh, the list maksudnya, Payung Teduh is the fastest who answered the question. Of course. Okay, so uh, get the extra marks here. Ya lah ya. Baru kenal dengan band ni. Salah. Okay, so yang ni ada enam students. Okay, answer the correct answer. Dan. Okay, boyak ah, first, yelah. handsome, sabahan. Ada ke boyak dalam list? Boleh tukar sujet teks lah. Use machine. Okay, good. What is the purpose for cost estimate for contractor? Okay, so the purpose for cost estimate is to ensure the offer price reasonable. Okay, handsome ni dah ada fire dah. Okay, the last one. Cost estimate to architect.
Okay, betul. So, architect guideline to prepare a design. Okay. So, kita see the winner for this Kahoot activity. Wow, Rosanna. Handsome. And the winner. Boya. Apa? Saya kenal lah, Subahan. Si, si boleh menang lagi kalau awak percaya. Tuyul lah. Awak nak tuyul ke lah? Subahan. Okay, thank you uh, sebab participate. Voting semua. Okay. Okay, so after uh, the Kahoot done, so untuk in, uh, embed Kahoot, in your elite page, okay, kita boleh embed macam ni, okay. If dalam kelas, uh, I ask the students, the winner to come in front and take the picture and then we upload it in the elite page. Okay, the reason why we need to embed the Kahoot activity in in the elite page so that uh, come can recognize uh, what activity that we Kita buat dalam kelas, okay? Because uh, Kahoot is one of the external tools, uh, apa? Bukan dalam ilip, ilip punya tools. So we need to embed dalam ilip supaya tu lah when come nak evaluate kita punya ilip patch boleh nampak, okay? What are the activities that we done? Okay, ni satu one method and the other another method we can screenshot that result. Okay, result yang sabahan. Okay, uh, handsome. Okay, we screenshot and we upload it in the elite patch. Okay, so, okay, ni pun one of the examples of the reward for the winner. Okay, so online tools number two, uh, Flipgrid. Okay, Flipgrid ni uh, used for video activity. If you want to a student to record the video, Okay, after the lecture or assignment, so we can use Flipgrid tools. Okay, so this is the patch of Flipgrid. Okay, uh, we can go to Flipgrid website and then we can create a new grid. Okay, okay, for example, this is my patch. Okay, our first grid is Sarawak Kacha Village. Okay, uh, during this activity, the students uh, go to SCV for their field trip. Okay, and I ask student to take uh, a record uh, three to five minute videos on the structure for each of the buildings in SCV. Okay, so uh, we also can use uh, ice breaking, uh, flip grid for ice breaking, introduce yourself. Sekejap lah. Okay, saya buka ni. Ini adalah saya punya uh, flip grid lah. Okay, kita boleh pergi ke flip grid and then we can log in as an educator and then we can create a new grid. Okay, for example tadi we go to this introduction, uh, ice breaking with my students. Okay, uh, I give one example. Shazani. Before this, I studied at Rayu uh, Yunus, uh, and why I choose Yunus is because uh, when before this Rayu, uh, we have a program called Terayuara, which is a program that is exposed us to uh, many courses in Yunus, uh, and and Yunus is one of them. And during that time, uh, the, the trail which is uh, Jawapi uh, as a state, most of the uh, thing that it has to do. And I'm thinking about the second semester, it's, uh, it's a little bit hard uh, compared to the second semester because it, uh, it, it contains uh, many uh, elements that I have not. Uh, before. Okay. Okay, so this is the example for icebreaking and we can download the video 
Yeah, we download the video. Okay, to embed in our easy patch. Okay, so this is the example for field trip. So this is room of Malayu. Showcase of Rumah Melayu. Okay. So I will show you guys around. So this is the interior design of Rumah Melayu. As you all can see, the window is bigger than other house. The door. They're made of timber, wood, and they have a design. For aesthetic value. For the wall, they use timber. And the floor is also made of timber. Okay. Okay, Simone. Yeah. Ada soalan berkenaan flip grid? Okay, we also can use flip grid for assignment. Okay, so I need all the participants to experience flip read. You can scan the QR code in your screen. Now. Okay, once you scan the QR code, you can uh, click the plus, the green one, the button. Okay, you can see this page. Okay, once you uh, scan the QR code. Okay, this uh, participants is from my uh, previous session. Okay, we can, I can give you one example. Mr. Gui? Okay, so this is an example of uh, SR Gui on how they go participate in the free grid. Okay, yang lain. Azan.
Sekarang kita tengok demonstrasi daripada <laughs> Masih ada Masih ada video tu kan Ada Okay ya Nadia, berapa duration video untuk flip grid maksimum? Uh, kita boleh set sam, uh, sampai lima minit rasanya oh. untuk ni. Eh tak ada lah, eh. baru ni sembilan perusahaan dia. Eh, dapat, dapat goal. Dapat eh? Dapat. Uh. Okay. okay. Contohlah kita nak uh, add new grid kan. Boleh uh, edit, kita boleh set yang uh, maksimum uh, video tu berapa. Uh, macam ni, maksimum yang baru-baru ni saya buat, maksimum duration of the video is 5 minutes. So, they can record until uh, 5 minutes maximum. Okay, so I continue with our next clip. Okay, so we can embed flip grip activity in your elite patch, in our elite patch. We can download video and, uh, and embed here. Okay, seperti one yon aja. Okay, online tools number three, Mentimeter, yang ni more to survey. Okay, so you can create the presentation here. Okay, uh, macam ni isikan dengan dokumen kontrol. Okay, so uh, you can scan the QR code. For example, we ask the students what do you expect in online distance learning. So if you scan this QR code, you can answer this question. Okay, so uh, Mentimeter uh, hasilnya macam ni. So we can screenshot nanti the result and embed into the elite patch. Okay, online tools number four is Lino It. Lino It ni uh, like sticky not. Okay, you can go here, for example. Okay, now we can, let's say if we in, uh, choose one clause in SRM2, for example. Okay, we list down the important points of the clause and then the student can uh, uh, can create their own notes here. Uh, for example, then pause it and everyone can see this uh, note. And also for the educate uh, lecturer. Okay, then we can embed that sticky note. Okay, kita ada HTML punya code, and then we embed in in the elite patch. So macam ni lah jadinya. Keluar. Okay, so the next tools, uh, the last one is Canva. Okay, Canva ni. Uh, Selalunya kita pakai untuk presentation, presentation slide and also for student activity to do their poster, infographic activity. In the Canva, for example, this is a Canva website. Okay, we can create a design. Okay, yang ni student, hmm, kebanyakan student memang dah pandai pakai lah. Okay, so we can uh, the poster here, the template. So a student can just edit, okay, suitable with the activities. Okay, so this is an example of infographic activity in my class. Okay, so this poster I embed in the edit patch. Okay, so Sonia, that's all. Any questions?
Hello Puan Nadia. Ya. Yeah. Ha. Kita dalam satu session hmm. untuk kuliah tu kita ada dalam 2 hours 45 minutes macam tu lah plus minus lah. Satu ha? kuliah kan. Per ha? week. Jadi kita nak cari, nak buka apa benda ni dengan uh, dia punya wifi kita slow. Mm-mm. Apa banyak masa tu buang tu? Uh, setakat ni kalau macam uh, yang kita implement sekarang lah Prof. Uh, we uh, apa 100% online learning. Yang tu saya belum experience tapi in my class uh, pakai wifi fakulti memang tak ada masalah lah Prof. Cuma orang kena di pesan awal bawa laptop. Sebelum aktiviti tersebut. Jadi, all this ada six system yang kita gunakan untuk ni. Dia dah memang kita dah masuk dalam kita punya lecture. Ah, masuk sekali. Ah, uh, yang ni selalunya uh, dibuat selepas lecture. Oh, uh, kata uh. for example uh. macam uh, student tu punya assignment, punya student tu punya video. Itu dia submit before or after? Yang tu kita bagi masa. Selalunya kalau assignment macam sebulan selepas tu submit kan. So dalam sebulan tu orang akan record lah. Oh, okay, okay. Kecuali kalau saya buat aktiviti dalam kelas. So orang kena record on the spot. Orang kena keluar daripada kelas and record. Contoh saya suruh uh, cari finishes dekat FD punya building. So orang kena keluar terus record and upload. Okay, okay. Kalau pakai wifi fakulti memang tak ada masalah. Puan Yon, uh, video yang awal tadi tu kalau boleh di share kan. Okay. Uh, sebab benda-benda ni sebenarnya perlu praktis. Hmm, hmm. Explore uh, Sebab kalau uh, kena explore sendiri. Hmm. Uh, saya tengok daripada video memang uh, very useful. Cuma uh, I need to explore it myself. Okay. Uh, benda-benda ni kita kena praktis, kena explore. And then all these tools yang ditunjukkan oleh uh, SR dan SR tadi tu memang very interesting. Cuma kita akan tengoklah which tools yang uh, sesuai lah untuk, untuk kita. So uh-uh. mungkin uh, kita akan selit juga lah. Uh, uh, COVID, sebab student sekarang ini kebanyakan yang lebih suka menggunakan tools rather than uh, apa nama. Uh, quiz macam biasa yang kita buat dekat dalam lecture. So, uh, it's good uh, to explore all the students. Uh. Hmm, okay, Dr. Okay. Awang, eh, uh, okay, Dr. Awang uh, tadi ada Dr. Terry cakap dia akan uh, dia akan ambil video ni and then share dekat YouTube lah uh, guna kamu punya tu. Nanti kalau buat tak ada, ambil orang share lah. Okay. Okay, so um, Nadia okay? Dah boleh okay. Okay. habis lah. Okay. So, kita lah penutup. <laughs> okay, um, to end this session, I would like to uh, thank everybody for um, joining us. Uh, I would like to apologize for <laughs> our, uh, any problem that we have counted today. Macam to sekat-sekat ke apa, because this is our first time conducting a uh, workshop. So, thank you very much and um, insyaAllah see you guys again in some other workshop. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum and have a nice day. Waalaikumsalam, Puan Yun. Yeah. Waalaikumsalam, terima kasih. Muka wafi. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Yun. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih.